Welcome to Math for Game Developers. Uh, where we were in previous videos, a quick recap. We have this cubic spline that's defined by a set of points, which I will call, the cubic spline is called Q of T. It's a function that, given any time, it tells you where along this, cube uh, this cubic spline you are. But our problem is that um, when two points are far apart, the camera moves very fast between them. And when the points are closer together, the camera moves a little bit slower. And what we want is for the camera to move at a constant speed. So we have to reparameterize this curve into a different curve that has all of the same points. It will go through all the same points, but at different times. It'll go through them in such a way that the camera is always moving at a constant speed. Uh, this is a bit of a capstone video, so if um, you're not familiar with any of the concepts covered in this video, you can go and review them in, in some of the previous videos that I've done, and I'll touch on that as we get to those. So for now, though, let's, um, let's just write a few equations that might be useful. First is good old standby d equals rt, distance equals rate times time. We know what our rate is going to be. Um, that's constant. It's constant speed after all. And um, we can choose any time we want. Okay, so given some time, we're going to fix a particular time and then find out uh, what distance we want to be for that time. And then we can find out what value of t we need to pass into this equation to get it so that it goes that distance. And that will be, that will be the distance that we will want to have gone along the curve. And we can use that information to build our uh, reparameterized curve. So let's take this one step at a time. We have this equation from last time, which takes forever to write out. Uh, and this is the arc length equation. Two derivatives squared, take a square root, dt. All right, so this is the arc length equation. It tells you how far along the curve you are at a time t. So I'm gonna take this part here in the middle and I'm gonna set that equal to lt. I'm gonna name it l of t, okay? This is called the integrand. The thing that you are integrating, the thing inside the integral is called the integrand. And I'm gonna name that lt because it will be useful later. And it's pretty e easy to calculate, honestly. It's just like um, the x distance squared plus the y distance. It's, it's a Pythagorean theorem, basically. And I'm gonna name this entire integral f of t. The entire integral is f of t. So in other words, f of t is equal to the integral from zero to t of L of t. These are just names that I've given to each of these equations. Oops, there's no equals here. And what we want is that this is equal to the distance that we've specified. T, uh, note, is the only variable here. D is, is, a, is a constant that we calculated, and we want to know what value of T we have to put in here to get this integral to equal D. In other words, what value of T do, do we want such that the distance along this line, the arc length of this line, is D? So it's a time at which this distance here is d. So that's what we want. And to do that, we're going to use a root finding method, a root finding method. So um, in order to do that, we have to have an equation uh, with zero on one side. So we're gonna subtract d from both sides of this equation, and we're gonna get f of t minus d equals zero. And this left side, I'm going to call g of t. So now we have g of t equals zero, and we can do root finding on g of t. 
So now we can apply our root finding methods, such as um, the newton rapson method that we covered uh, in a previous video. So let's do that. I'm just going to write out that formula from the previous video. We're going to do root finding on G, and we get T of N minus G of N over G prime of T of N uh, equals T of N plus 1. All right. So we need to find, we need a few things. We need to find a derivative of G for 1. Um, and we know that G is equal to, so hold on, let me, let me just rewrite this over here. Equals T of N minus, I'm going to expand G of N. I made these names so that it's easier to think about them, but now I'm going to undo that expansion. All right, and we get F of T minus D in the denominator. So that's what G is. F of T is this whole big thing right here. And we're going to use Simpson's rule to calculate that. We covered Simpson's rule in the previous video. Not the enumerator combinatorics video, but the other one. The one before that. Um, so we need to find a derivative of f of t minus d now. Now d is a constant. We calculated it as a constant. So it just falls out. So it becomes zero. The derivative of a constant is zero. Um, so we need to find the derivative of f of t is the other thing we need to we need to find. And that is the derivative of this integral, the integral from zero to t of lt dt. And uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus part one says that um, l of t is the derivative of f of t. Not covering what the fundamental theorem of calculus is, um, but the upshot is that the opposite of a derivative is an integral. We have covered this in, uh, in my series about calculus. And so if you take the derivative of an integral, whatever is in the middle just pops out as your answer. And how do we evaluate L of t? It's just Pythagorean theorem. So we need some n subscripts here, and then we are ready to go. We're ready to calculate we're ready to do the root finding on this and uh, and calculate what our reparameterized curve is going to be. Um, so that's about all I can do on the blackboard. Let's go to the code section because I think this will make a lot more sense if we can see it in action. So I'll see you there. All right, welcome to the code portion of what are we doing again? Oh yeah, constant speed blinds. Um, this is a little procedure I've made that can give us, it will return the, um, the constant velocity spline. At, see, this is the old one. This is the regular spline, which is not constant velocity. And we're going to write a new one that returns constant velocity, uh, given a time and a speed, which together, as we know, can make a distance. And it'll return us a position. And our strategy will be that we're going to run this in a loop uh, with evenly spaced values of t, and we will get back evenly spaced positions. That wasn't true with spline at time. Well, here, here's the loop. Here's the loop. And we're, we're just evenly spacing out these values of k. And uh, at the end, we're going to have a list of evenly spaced spline segments that we're going to draw right from the list. So let's get to it here. The first thing I want to do is create some uh, simple helper functions. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, so this is the G function that we talked about in the math section. And we defined it as f. It takes a parameter t, and it returns a float. And f, in our case, is going to be f. F is the function that we do Simpson's rule on, if you remember. And I have a function that does Simpson's rule. Here it is. Um, here's the here's the actual function that does Simpson's rule, and then I have a helper function 
that assembles all of the because because our cubic spline is uh, a piecewise function it has many sections so I have to assemble all of those sections together so this is a helpful this is a helpful helper function this is the actual function right here in any case that's already written so I can just put it right there and then d the desired distance I calculate up here by time times speed that's d equals rt and I use f mod by the total length to make sure that it stays within our problem domain. All right, so one more helper function that's capital L. Uh, it's another function that takes a float, returns a float. By the way, this is the C++ lambda syntax. If you've never seen it, I'm just making a local function. L is the integrand of the arc length. And I have another helpful function up here uh, that calculates the integrand. And this is a, a in the same way, there's a helper function that, that takes care of some weird edge cases. Where was I? So, all right. Oh, and well, now I have to do some captures here. There we go. Uh, all right, so let's get started with the actual meat of the thing. So the first thing I have to do is figure out what's my initial estimate because I'm using a root finding technique. So I need an initial estimate. Um, and actually this parameter t will work pretty good as, as a starting point. If t is zero, then we're looking at the beginning of the curve. If t is a big number, we're looking at the end of the curve. So it roughly corresponds to what we want. Um, and I already calculated the desired distance that I want to go. So I can use the desired distance divided by the total total distance as my starting point, except that, um, except that this guy right here is expecting not a value from 0 to 1, but a, a value from 0 to the number of spline points that I have. So I just have to multiply by spline points. All right, and this is some bookkeeping right here. Okay, so now let's write our actual Newton iteration uh, because t last and t next are the tn and tn plus one that I'm using. Yeah, t next is tn plus one and t last is tn. I have to do this swap right here to because um, I'm not making a, a new value of t for each iteration. So I have to do this, and then this is the actual. This is the actual uh, Newton method right here, and that should do it. That should match what we had in the math portion of the video. So then, what is the condition on this loop? That's the question. That is the question. What do I put here? Uh, I could do this. I could do you know something like that but then the question is um, sometimes I may do this loop too many times like 15 might be too high a number I really have no way of knowing I, I just run the loop 15 times and then whatever accuracy I get I get but I don't really know if that's appropriate or I I may um, 15 may not be enough I, I really have no idea so instead of doing that that can be a valid approach. Um, you can. There are sometimes a formula that you can use to calculate what is the, what is a, a number, a specific number, that I have to do, the number of iterations that I have to do to always be sure that I'm going to get within the right um, precision. But in this case, we're going to take a def slightly different strategy. I'm going to take the distance between these two numbers. And I'm going to compare it to some other number. I'll take 0.1 for now. Okay. And the reason this works is every ideal, ideally every iteration that you do with Newton's method gets you slightly closer, which means that the distance between these two numbers is going to get less and less. Like first I'll have a hundred, then I'll have 10, then I'll have one, then I'll have one half, then I'll have 0.1. You know, these are, these are getting closer to zero and they're getting closer together to each other. Um, so for as long as they are more than 0.1 apart, 
I know my error is 0.1. As soon as they get less than 0.1, I can break out of this loop because I know I'm at least within 0.1 of, of the answer. Okay, so that's it. Let's um, save this guy and build him. And oops, I have some compiler errors. What did I? Oh, because I need to do this. Okay, oh, and I have to capture the desired distance. Oh, and I forgot it. I always forget the semicolons at the end of lambdas. Alright, there we go. So, that's from a previous run up there. Okay, so I have an assert. So that's weird. Uh, let's take a look at what's wrong here. Alright. And we can see that t last is negative 112. So at some point, this Newton's method, this is my Newton's method right here. And at some point, my Newton's method calculated a really large negative number. And that didn't seem right. Um, so let's see. Let's investigate a little more closely what's going on. So k is 327 in this case. I'm going to rerun um, and set k equals 327. And then step in here and see what was happening during that step. All right, so let's see. We start with t last and t next. This must have been our initial estimate. So that will probably correspond to 101 divided by 316 times the number of splines, which I think is 16, okay? So that's where this five comes from. Uh, we calculated that right here. And that's our initial estimate. So let's see what happens after one iteration. Now the next iteration is 1.5. Okay, so so far so good. Uh, I think the actual answer is around four or something, so we're getting further away. That might be a warning sign right there. But let's keep going. We do another iteration, and the next number it comes up with is 10. And that's bad. Like, the difference between uh, five and 1.5 is less than the difference between one and 10. So we're spiraling outward. We're, we're getting bigger and bigger all the time, which is not what we want out of, um, out of uh, Newton's method. And then we hit that negative 112, which is way farther from 10. Uh, so, this, so this is what's happening. Our initial estimate is actually not good enough, right? Newton's, Newton's method needs a pretty good estimate. And sometimes if you don't have a good estimate, uh, then you're in trouble. And that's what's happening to us in this case. So, our usual um, method for dealing with this is to do a few bisections. And it just so happens uh, that I have some code for some bisections here. Just going to stick that in right there. Uh, if you're not familiar with bisection video, you can watch my, I'm sorry, with bisection method, you can watch my video on bisections. Um, and the reason it works is that you are guaranteed to always converge on your answer, unlike Newton's method. Newton's method is faster, but it won't always converge. Um, so we're just going to do a few bisections until we're within 0.5 of the answer. 0.5 is kind of an arbitrary number, but in this case, it, um, it ends up helping. It ends up being, um, sorry, it ends up being enough to make sure that the Newton's method that follows always converges. So let's see. We'll build that. If this doesn't look familiar uh, to you, again, uh, I explain it all in the Newton's method video. I'm sorry, in the bisection video. I'm not going to cover it again now. So we're going to employ a bisection method. And let's see what happens now when we set k equals, what was it, 327, I think? So now we're going to go into this bisection method. And by the time we get through with it, I'm just uh, stepping through the bisection method a few times. Okay, 
So let's see what our new estimate is. So there we go. Our new estimate is 4.05. So we've changed what our new estimate is. We've found a new estimate for, new for Newton's method by using bisection. So then our next iteration, you can see is much closer, 3.9 versus 4.1, that's only like 0.2 apart. And then, oh, that's it. That's actually all the Newton's uh, method iteration that we needed. Uh, we're probably not um, very accurate because I only set this to 0.1 accuracy right there. But still, let's, let's see what we get. We'll delete all those breakpoints and run the program. And here we go. So this is kind of weird. That's not good. But let's see what else is going on. Yeah, our guy is definitely moving at a constant speed. But you can see that there are some hiccups. Oh, wow. Yeah. See how our guys are jumping around a little bit? You can kind of see that, jumping around. They're not quite moving at a constant speed. And the reason for that is that, and by the way, if you don't see the difference between this and um, our previous result, if you don't see what constant speed is, go watch the, the previous video where I do the cubic spline and, and you'll see that like these guys slow down a lot as they're going through this curvy section right here. Uh, whereas here they just zip through them real fast like that. Um, so, Let's come back and increase our accuracy a little bit. So this is this is going to be our new accuracy right here. We are, I'm sorry, I say accuracy, I meant precision. We're going to increase our precision to 0 0.001. So that will take a few extra iterations of Newton's method, I'm sure. But really not that many. So let's run it again and see the difference now. Yep, okay, we fixed that weird angle thing that was happening. And I can't really tell if there's any difference. Like, the guys don't look like they're skipping around anymore. And I, in fact, I programmed this thing to be the exact same speed as uh, the player. So let's see if that's true. I'm just going to follow them around. And yeah, they're pretty much the exact same speed as me. So it looks like all of them. The math works out. Um, let's see if there is there anything else I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I don't think so. I think that's it. So, congratulations. We tied a lot of things together. Oh, there was one more minor thing. This way of doing bisection method before um, before our before our Newton's method is actually kind of inefficient. And there are ways of doing it better because we already have a pretty good estimate. Um, I just don't want to get into that right now. It's kind of at, we're, this video is already too long. So just be aware that those exist. So yeah, so that ties it up for this video. Um, join us next time when we are going to start into differential equations uh, beginning with phase planes. See you then.